Hi, I'm Yvonne Pran with Bible 805, and we are on day 16 of reading through the New Testament. We are starting the book of Mark today. Now, Mark is a very different gospel than Matthew. It starts in by saying the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and boom, it's right into the story. Matthew had a long genealogy. Mark just jumps right in, and historians tell us that Mark was most likely written from Rome, probably shortly after the apostle Peter was martyred, and it was written to the Romans, and so it's a book of action. It's these are the things Jesus did. It's not going into lengthy genealogies or even lengthy sermons or anything like that. It's he did this, he did this, he did this. You see this right away with John the Baptist announces that he is coming and he baptizes Jesus. And then it says at once the spirit sent him into the desert. He was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. Nothing about how he responded with verses or any of that just was tempted. The angels helped him. He went on from there. He then calls his disciples and he encourages them to repent and believe because the kingdom of God is near. And he demonstrates the kingdom of God by driving out evil spirits and healing people. He, again, actions very quickly. He does these things. He heals people. He heals Peter's mother-in-law. He goes and then prays in a solitary place after the healings, because no doubt he's exhausted from that. But the people don't leave him alone. And it says that he goes down because he he wants to help them. He wants to minister to them. And he tells them that he was sent to preach. A man then comes up to him with leprosy. And I wonder how many of us would have responded like Jesus did. Leprosy was a horrible ugly, dreadful disease. And Jesus not only answers his plea for healing, but it says he had compassion on him and he touched him. That was forbidden by the law, but he touched him and he healed him. And then his next healing is, of course, one of a lot of people's favorite Bible stories where a man is paralyzed and his friends are bringing him on a mat, but they can't get in to see Jesus. So there's too many crowds, uh, too many people in the crowd around the house that he's in. So they go up on the roof and they dig a hole and they lower their friend to see Jesus. And then it's kind of interesting because what it says then is it says when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of their friends, he said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven. forgiven. And of course, the Pharisees jump all over him and say, but who can forgive sins but God alone? And that's precisely the point. Jesus is God. And that in forgiving sins, he is showing him that that's who he is. He goes on from there. He calls Levi from his tax collector's booth. And people are, are just, you know, saying, how can, how can he do that? Why, why would he want to associate with such people? And Jesus then says this wonderful statement where he says, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That's you and me. Jesus calls us, not the holy and the self-righteous and the super good ones, but the people that really need him. He's questioned about fasting, and he says, you know, people don't need to fast now, but, you know, after I leave, they can, because new things are being done with Jesus being there. And then on the Sabbath, of course, they have they find fault with him because what his disciples are doing they're they're eating some grain and Jesus said no you don't understand the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath and he says you know the the lord he's referring to himself he is lord of the sabbath also Jesus came to be lord of our lives to give us rest on the Sabbath, to give us healing, to give us joy. And we can't let the people that would box him in take that away from us.